everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to talk to you in this video about finding maximum and minimum values for some equation over a feasible region. So we assume you know how to graph systems of inequalities. We're going to be referring back to systems that we graphed and solved already. When we maximize or minimize some equation, usually is written as z equals some number times x plus some number times y. When we maximize or minimize an equation like this on a system of linear inequalities, it maybe looks something like this, where we've graphed the inequalities and found a region as our solution for our system of inequalities. We call that graphed region the feasible region. So this is the region that is all of the solutions for just the system of inequalities, not taking into account this equation yet. When we have a maximum and or a minimum value for this equation on this region, it is going to occur at one of the vertices of the region. In other words, it's going to occur at one of the corner points here. Let's look at our first examples. This is our first system of inequalities we did in our system of inequalities video. So if we want to maximize z equal to 4x plus 7y on this region, then that means that the maximum that we can get for z using this formula is going to occur at one of these corner points. So what we'll need to do with our feasible region is be able to find the vertices, find the corner points. We'll need to label them, and then we'll see which one gives us, in this case, since we're finding the maximum, we're going to find out which point gives us the most out of this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and just label my vertices. You can see all of these are on an axis, so it's pretty easy to find. This bottom corner of the triangle obviously is at 0, 0. It's at the origin, so that's one of our points. Uh, over here, my x-intercept is at 5, and so this point here is actually at 5, 0. And this other intercept here is actually at 2 on the y-axis, so this is actually at 0. Comma two. So we have all of these vertices here. One of these is going to give us the most out of this equation when we plug it in to find the value. So let's figure out which of these is the maximum for this equation on the region. So I'm going to plug in 0, 0. I'm going to plug in 0, 2. And I'm going to plug in 5, comma 0. And we'll see which one gives us the most. So into this z equals equation. So 4x plus 7y, if I plug in 0, 0, that would be 4 times 0 plus 7 times 0. I think that gives us 0 for that one. If I plug in 0, comma 2, so 0 for x and 2 for y, then that would be 4 times 0 plus 7 times y, and my y is 2 here, right? So this is 0, and this is 14, so 0 plus 14 gives us 14 for this one. If I plug in 5 comma 0 into this, then I will get 4 times 5 plus 7 times 0 for my z, and that would be 20 plus 0 is going to give us 20. And so we get z values of 0 and 14 and 20, and we want to maximize, so we choose whichever one is the greatest of these values. So this is the highest value. I have a maximum of 20. And let's go ahead and say when that occurs. That occurs at the point 5, comma 0, right? So also say at the point 5, comma zero. Okay, so the idea is this triangle is our feasible region. And if I want to find where in this region do I get the most out of the formula 4x plus 7y, I plug in all my vertices, my corner points, see which one gives me the most since I'm looking for the max. And that's my answer and that's where it occurs. Let's look at this next one here. We want to maximize and minimize, so we want to find the point that gives us both the most and the least. My formula is z equals 5x plus 6y, and here I have this system that we already solved and graphed in our video right before this in the series. I went ahead and labeled uh, which of these lines is which equation in my system here. Obviously, my axes are my x equals 0 and y equals 0 equations here. Some of the vertices in these feasible regions are going to be easy to find. Anything that's on an axis should be easy, right? This is 0, 0. That's super easy to find. 
This 6, 0, even if I didn't have this labeled maybe quite as well, I should have probably been able to find this when I graphed my x plus y equals 6. I probably had already labeled this and sketched this point to draw the line. So this 6, 0 is something I should probably also already know. And this one here at 0, 4, I should also probably know that one as well when I graphed my 7x plus 14y equals 56 using intercepts. I probably already knew what this point was. The trick is, I think, figuring out what is this point here where these cross. Now you could solve this by hand, uh, but I think an efficient way to do this might be to solve this by graphing calculator. And what we'll want to be able to do is solve systems by matrices. So if we put both of these equations in a matrix, and let's say we ref in a matrix both of these, so we would ref 7, 14, 56, along with the row 1, 1, 6. And then we could figure out what this point is. If you're if you're labeled really, really well and you know you've plotted this with super straight lines, you might be able to tell exactly that this is the point 4, comma 2. But if you're sort of sketching this by hand, it might be hard to tell what a vertex is when it's two diagonal lines crossing each other. And so one short, quick way to do that is to get really good at solving uh, systems using ref with a calculator and doing it with matrices. But we've got all our vertices. Let's write all those down. So we have 0, 0. We'll plug that in. We also have 0, comma 4. We have 6, comma 0. And we have 4, comma 2. And we're going to plug all these in and we're maximizing and minimizing. So we'll figure out which one gives us the most and the least. If I plug in 0, 0, that would be 5 times 0 plus 6 times 0. Well, that's going to give us 0, right? If we plug in 0, comma 4, then we'll have 5 times 0 plus 6 times 4. And that will give us 24. If we plug in 6, comma 0, we would have 5 times 6 now plus 6 times 0. That's 30 plus 0, so that would give us 30. And then plugging in 4, comma 2, we would get 5 times 4 plus 6 times 2. 5 times 4 is 20 plus another 12. That would give us 32. So if we look back here and we want the max and the min, my biggest value I get out of the formula 5x plus 6y, 32. This is our max, right? And 0 is our smallest value, so that's our min. So we would go ahead and say maximum of 32 at the point we plugged in was 4 comma 2 right to get that one so at 4 comma 2 that's our max and then our min our minimum of 0 and that happened at the origin right so that's at 0 comma 0 and that would be our answer for both the max and the min on this feasible region given z equals 5x plus 6y. Let's look at another example where we maximize and minimize. Here we have the equation z equals 4x plus 3y, so we're going to max and min that on this feasible region. We went ahead and did the work of solving this feasible region in our previous Systems of Inequalities video. 8x plus 6y less than equal 144, so we've got this 8x plus 6y equals 144 line here. x minus 2y less than equal negative 4. So I've got labeled here my x minus 2y equals negative 4. And then x greater than equal 0. x equal to 0 is the y-axis here. So those were the boundaries of this. This is a bounded region here. We already should know some of these intercepts or we could kind of look at the equations and tell. The y-intercept here is actually at 2. So this is at 0 comma 2. I should also know this intercept, since it's on an axis when I graphed this, I probably knew that this was at y equal to 24. So that's 0, 24. You could always just zero out the x term and solve for y if you want to get that, if you haven't already done this with us in the last video. And then the big question again becomes, uh, what is this point here where the two diagonal lines are meeting? So remember, we can find that point there by row reducing and doing it quickly in a graphing calculator that uses matrices. So setting up the coefficients, right, we could ref 8, 6, 1, 44, along with the row 1, negative 2, negative 4. 
And if we do that, we should get that this point is 12, 8. Okay, so we have our three vertices. We have 0, 24, 0, 2, and 12, 8. Let's go ahead and write those down. 0, 2, 0, 24, and 12, 8. And we'll plug these into the formula z equals 4x plus 3y and see which one gives us the most and the least. So this one would say 4 times 0 plus 3 times 2. That 0 plus 6, and that gives us 6 there. Plugging in 0, 24, we would have 4 times 0 plus 3 times 24. That 0 plus 72 there, so this would be 72 and plugging in 12 comma 8 so we would have 4 times 12 plus 3 times 8 now 4 times 12 is 48 plus 3 times 8 which is 24 48 plus 24 gives us 72 so now an interesting thing happens here right i think you can tell certainly that this is our minimum right so we would certainly say that there is a minimum of 6 and that occurs at the point we plugged in 0 comma 2 right so at 0 comma 2 and now this oddball situation happens here we have a tie right we have two things being the exact same highest value over the region so when we have a tie at two vertices in our feasible region what that's saying is that 0 24 and 12 comma 8 when I plug those in I get the same amount out of this formula and it turns out because this is a linear feasible region every point on the line in between those is also going to be a max of the same value so we would actually say that there is a maximum of 72 at the point 0 24 and at 12 comma 8 and also all points in between and all points on that line in between those two points okay so a little bit more to write than usual there but that's our answer for this one so when you have a tie whether it's for a min or a max then both of those points will give you that max or min, so they're considered both to be the max or both to be the min. And if we're dealing with a linear region, in other words, if we have lines for all the boundaries of our region, then also every point on the line in between those two vertices is also going to be a max or a min in whatever case you have it. So we want to look at two more examples. Um, these regions are a little bit different, our feasible regions here. You'll notice I have certainly a corner here at this point and I also have a corner point here so I have those two vertices as well but what happens with our feasible region as we graphed this in our last video systems of linear inequalities uh, this region just keeps going up as long as it stays between these two vertical lines here it just keeps continuing up forever so we get what's called an unbounded region when you have an unbounded region it's possible that you may not have a min or you may not have a max or you may not have both actually um, we're just going to minimize on this region because this one actually because it keeps going up forever has no maximum based on this formula so we're just going to find the minimum for this one now you'll notice that neither of these vertices are actually an intercept right so I might need to ref both of these to figure out what the points are now what you might do is you might just look at this and say well this one's where x equals 2 so I'm just going to plug in you know x equals 2 and I'm going to solve for y manually and that's certainly fine and you know here you could plug in x equals 10 into this other one where they meet you could get your vertex that way as well we're just going to go ahead and talk about refing these and not use algebra to solve by hand so this one here I have 2x plus 5y equals 30 at that corner point so 2 5 30 and what does that mean well that meets the line x equals 2 at that point so that would be 1 0 2 in a matrix now you'll notice one of these is already reduced right so it's only going to reduce this top row and this point here is going to end up being 2 comma 5.2 we get 5.24 our y value here if we want to 
ref this one. So this line here is certainly where the 2x plus 5y equals 30 meets a line, right? So we would put 2, 5, and 30 in this matrix as well, but this line meets the x equals 10 line at that point, so we would put 1, 0, 10 in as our second row. Again, you can solve this by hand if you'd like. If we ref this, I think you'll figure out that we get the point 10, 2 for this one here. Okay, so in this case we only have two vertices to check, and then whichever one is less will give us the minimum, right? So we have 2, 5, point 2, and we also have 10, 2. Okay, if we plug 2, 5.2 into 5x plus 15y, then that will give us 5 times 2 plus 15 times 5.2. And if we figure out what that is, that gives us a total of 88. And our 10, 2, if we plug that in, that would be 5 times 10 plus 15 times 2, and that gives us 50 plus 30, and so that's 80. So we have 80 and 88, and if I want to minimize, then I choose the smaller value. So 80 is going to be our minimum there. So we would say a minimum of 80, and we'll say that it occurs at the point 10, 2. Okay, let's look at one more with an unbounded region. So here I have my last unbounded region from our previous video. Here's our system. We were in the first quadrant and we also had to be above both of these diagonal lines here and I've labeled which they are. We want to minimize z equals 20x plus 12y on this region. This region is unbounded. It's going up and to the right. The shading continues up and right forever. So this is an unbounded region. So it is possible that this doesn't have a min or a max or both, um, but because it's going up and to the right forever and based on my equation here, this actually doesn't have a max you will find. But we're going to find the min because there is actually a min that we can find. So let's go ahead and figure out where our vertices are. So a couple of these are on an axis, so when you graphed these lines and set up your region you probably figured these out, or you could easily now. So this is the point 0, 12 y-intercept of 12, and this is an x-intercept of 10. So that point there is 10, 0. And the only thing left to find is this point where the two diagonal lines intersect, right? So to solve this, we could go ahead and ref this. And so one of my equations is 10, 5, 60 as a row in the matrix, and the other one would be 2, 5, 20 as a row in the matrix. And so we could go ahead and ref that, and I think we'll see that this turns out to be the point 5, 2. So our vertices are just 0, 12, and 10, 0, and 5, 2. So we will plug those into our formula we're trying to minimize. So here I would have 20x would be 20 times 0, plus 12y would be 12 times 12. So that's 0 plus 144, that'll be 144 for this one. 10 comma 0, I have 20x would be 20 times 10, plus 12y would be 12 times 0. And this one, 20 times 10, is going to give us 200 there. And then 5 comma 2, that will give us 20 times 5 for 20x. And for 12y, that will give us 12 times 2. And 20 times 5 is 100 plus 24, so we get 124 there. So I look at 144, 200, and 124, and I want the minimum, so I would choose this as my minimum since it's the smallest output. So we would say here we have a minimum of 124, and it occurs at the point we plugged in 5, 2 to get that minimum. So at 5, 2. In other words, when x is 5 and when y is 2. 
Okay, everyone, hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to find a max or a min or both on your feasible regions. Remember to decide if you have an unbounded or a bounded region. If you have a bounded region, you're guaranteed to have a max and a min on that region. If you have an unbounded region, just remember you may not have one or you may not have both of them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.